And we want to get you a little bit more on some of the other statistics coming in from January. So we are going to check in now with NOAA climate scientist Karen Gleason. And Karen, can you talk a little bit about how it's been for the United States as well as the Caribbean with those statistics? Yes, well, as you said, for the globe, it was the warmest January on record. Um, looking more close to home here in the lower 48, we had our fifth warmest January on record in the last 126 years. Um, none of the states averaged above average for the whole state or, or average, near average or below average. Um, we didn't have any records either. So it was just, there was just broad warmth across the contiguous U.S. Uh, Michigan ranked fifth warmest and Wisconsin and Rhode Island were both sixth warmest. And when we think about the temperatures, there are certain events or certain things that happen or effects as a result. What were some of the most notable ones that we had across the United States in January? So a couple of things to note um, for, for folks that need to heat their homes in the winter time, um, they they'll have a little more money in their pocket um, in January. Our, we, we track um, energy consumption through a residential energy index, and that was the third lowest January on record also in 126 years. So that's good news for people who need to heat their homes. Also, um, with the, the warmth uh, across centered across the Great Lakes, um, the, uh, the ice coverage is below average, about 35% of average at the end of January. And that can mean that um, there's an increased probability or likelihood that we could have late season lake effect snow, as well as coastal erosion, because lake levels are also really high from the really wet 2019 we had and the wet early 2020 that we had uh, or are having still. So that could lead to potentially to some coastal erosion issues around the Great Lakes. What are some of the factors, Karen, that help to drive those much warmer temperatures or that drove that climate pattern for the month of January? Well, interesting, interestingly enough, we've had a really um, a strong uh, teleconnection pattern called the Arctic Oscillation. Um, it's at or near record levels, or was in January, is at record levels now. And what that really is, is it measures the pressure difference between the polar low and the subtropical highs. And when that pressure difference is really large, we're in a positive Arctic Oscillation, or AO phase. And what that does is that traps the air near the Arctic so you, can, you don't have these cold air intrusions down into the lower 48. So that really kept us a lot more mild in the winter than we typically would be. We really appreciate it. That was Karen Gleason, the NOAA climate scientist and also a fellow Valparaiso University graduate. Thank you so much for joining us and for that very important information on our record-setting January of 2020.